the birth of any piece for specifically for this show um, a lot of the designs comes out of the theme um, and uh, the name of the show um, where we come from is um, has a lot to do with um, my my fa my family and my people's history and um, each one of the pieces I based on either just native forms that are very specific to here like as in um, where I come from is start the start the First Nations and then the um, um, always combining or pushing the envelope as in terms of sometimes just simple form to create a piece and what affects us and this piece behind me that's uh, I believe I called it the South Wind and um, I think that's really important for um, to remember some of the just really basic stuff when it comes to our my culture right and that um, at, at a certain time of year, you know, nowadays we talk about how our lives change when the weather changes. And for us, we turn up the heat. We just go to a dial and turn up the heat. And um, a long time ago, we had to make sure there was enough wood and your clothing was um, repaired or the clothing you were going to wear for the winter had a certain... Um, so it could retain heat. And your shelters, a lot of our shelters, we moved around. You could take the whole roof off our shelter, and they were called barge boards, and you'd, you'd line them up between two or three canoes, and you would sail them out to the next village. You wouldn't take all of them, you'd only take enough to cover your other village. And, I, and those kind of things, like, you know, where we come from, was it's really important at, uh, um, to me to be aware of that you know as far as um, not just my people but even of you know for my future and my children's future that uh, you know where you came from you know where did you come from and it seems like a simple enough statement but it's really loaded you know with um, if you even look at at Victoria there's something like 350,000 people in Victoria and me and my wife were talking and how important that is and how each piece that I do whether it's this one or this one how it reflects that um, not only our lives change but our art changes with our environment the different type of materials and you know I'm using a traditional material which is cedar but also I've changed it in terms of color and distressing it and adding um, uh, an applicator, a mask to the top, and having them mean something that, you know, whether um, whoever decides to buy it, that it's it has some weight in this time, and also it has a bit of an echo to the past as well, with the traditional shapes and and the designs and the carving being all very traditional. Um, when I talk about style as far as my art goes, um, and even in this show, um, I always see myself as almost like at the beginning of something. And um, I get my, my uh, influences or my um, excitement from, you know, say the, in this case, the, the title where, where we come from and um, or where we came from and I think in every artist's life they have to kind of they can sort of scribble around and do art but they never until they lock into something that's either their style or in my case I'm taking traditional forms like like the u-shape like right here is a u-shape and uh, um, if it's like a U-shape or like um, a T-shape or any of those, I really, I really fall in love with those pieces or those those designs and shapes. But I really grow from them. And and part of my development was in the beginning was even just seeing the forms and feeling feeling um, uh, like they're 
family or something like that, but not understanding, but knowing that they're, that's your family or your, your historical art. And being in other places, like say being in Mexico and seeing some of the beautiful art, there's some similar forms I saw when I was there. But I could sure see the pride, you know, a lot of the, um, a lot of the different designs people would come up with, and a lot of the paintings and how prideful they are, and to say an artist's name with such rever reverence, uh, I just was amazed, and and I was part of a, um, I, I uh, taught for a while at uh, immersion school, and how the immersion children came up to me because I was a native artist and there were a lot of them were Mexican they're learning in Canada as English as second language and um, just their pride in their artwork they even brought their own um, one of them brought me a book that was all on Mexican art stone art uh, paintings it was just incredible and just to seeing that same thing in myself to see that kind of beautiful art here and I, I don't I don't have to be an artist I don't even have to be an artist and there's enough art in Victoria and, and in my history I, I could enjoy for my lifetime but to be able to participate in it and do it and feel comfortable with doing it um, is quite amazing like and and watching my children be artists and watching my friends in certain parts of my family um, be just incredible artists and being around other artists that are from all over the place say, say in Alteringa you've got Papua New Guinea and and then you've got art that goes across Canada and being associated with that and my style, my specific style, it came from a different place. Like, you know, for me, I had to really, really watch how much I say do in cedar because I'm very allergic to cedar, and which really affected me. But at the same time, sort of after I was ready to move on from cedar, I already developed as a many skills. Like, got an aircraft sheet metal ticket. I did a lot of carpentry and a, an incredible amount of mechanics and metalworking, welding, and balancing that with what I already know, plus associating with different computer programs. I was able to accomplish a lot of the things that are both small scale, like jewelry, all the way up to really large scale. And I think that was really incredible as far as developing my style. For me, when I combined everything I do in the past probably 10 years, it was like throwing open the door in a big way. As then I, you know, I was listening to Bill Reed one time and he said when he could no longer do jewelry, um, he started doing the biggest jewelry he knew how to do and that was art for large buildings, like the, you know, the jade canoe or the white canoe and, and for me that just hit a real incredible chord inside of me when I couldn't carve cedar the way I used to I had all of a sudden opened that door in such a big way and you know blew my mind as far as I could attach all or connect all of these things I already knew how to do and turn them into something everybody says it's contemporary but at the same time the way I see it it's it's my way of express still being able to express myself with a certain with any kind of material now and being able to interpret that and that's it's unbelievably a lot harder than people realize and I of course everybody says I make it look easy but it's a lot harder because I'm really the road I'm on is um, is like um, having to recreate a new the, the old road but in a new way and everybody likes the clean lines and all of that and the different materials but for me I have to sort of I can carve a totem pole but I have to now reinterpret it as whatever it is right in other materials glass or metal or or whatever and it's what what comes out that's exciting really 
but one of the things that I was taught, and this is from, like, I've been mentored by quite a number of really amazing artists, and uh, the one thing that I really, really enjoyed was um, one of the things they always explained to me, there's carvers and there's artists, and there's also artists who are carvers, and one of the biggest things that I was, they were able to teach me was a good carver can carve a good designer, like an artist's, a good artist's design. They can carve it almost in their sleep. Whereas, like, just a a, car, a guy who can say just carve can only, um, um, it's almost a pen without paper. You just, you've got the pen, but you, you have no paper. And, and really seeing that ability as, as uh, in when I was told it, in the beginning, I just didn't understand. And now seeing it, say, 20 years from, from maybe that statement originally happened, is just seeing that when somebody has an eye for design, it's like any other artist in the world, you know, you, you have really good artists, but not all, they don't always do the art. They don't always put the, put the paint, paint to uh, uh, canvas. You know, a lot of, there was a lot of artists that they had other people do that. But an incredible artist can, can um, design such amazing things. Yeah. 